Hello, my beautiful friends. Welcome back to another video. So, before I get started, auction paintings. All auction paintings will be mailed out by this Wednesday. I thank you for your patience. I had 38 paintings to either put a single coat or double coat on. Most of them needed two coats. They came out beautiful. They will be on their way to you. So it's just been over a little bit over two weeks. So I think I've done really good with almost 40 paintings. Well, actually I had more than 40 because I had a couple of commissions I had to do. So I thank you for your patience. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to Lori Fincer for the beautiful gift she sent me. She got me something off my Amazon list that came in this beautiful gift bag. I didn't even know that they did this. And she sent me my favorite color in the whole world, Muted Violet by Liquitex. Lori, thank you so very, very much. So now, what are we doing here? I want to do a Dutch bore, a triptych as you can see. Backgrounds are gonna be gray and I'm going to use red, black, sterling silver. I think it's going to look absolutely beautiful. I know you've seen those paintings where they're all gray with a little girl and maybe she's holding a bright red rose. Um, I love those paintings. I don't know if this qualifies as monochromatic, probably not because of the colors I'm adding in, but we are going to go for it. Canela Sirocco Art made the most beautiful Dutch pours I have ever seen with a gray background. Now, if you don't know who she is, which I highly doubt, I will link her video, uh, her channel above and in the description. Please check her out. She has made the most beautiful Dutch pours on this gray back background that I have ever seen. So that is what I am going to try to do, but using red, black, and silver. So for colors, I am using Lamp Black by Grumbacher. I am using crimson with a little dot of black to deepen it up by Windsor and Newton. And then I have, I don't have the bottle for the other red, but it's a soft body uh, cadmium red by Liquitex. And then deco art sterling silver. Those are the colors. The gray I made myself using black and white. Uh, it's very simple. Just put some, some black paint in a cup and add some white until you achieve the color you want or vice versa. It works both ways. What I'm going to do is coat the canvases really quick off camera because that's boring and we are going to jump right into this. Okay, so while I'm taking a second to sit up here, I thought it would be a good time to ask you to subscribe if you haven't already and make sure you click the notification bell and select the word all to receive all notifications of upcoming videos. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to tell you these paints are very runny. Um, you want that paint to flow off the stick very fast and when it hits the surface of the paint in the cup, you want it to go right back into itself and leave no trace. That's how I find the best thickness for the Dutch pour to be. Um, so I first put down that pyrrole red that I darkened, or I'm sorry, the crimson red that I darkened with a little bit of black. And then I'm adding just a little bit of the black. It's very easy for a color to take over. So if you want just a little bit of it in there, be very light handed. So next I'm going to be adding the sterling silver. Whenever I use a metallic, I like to add it in between colors. I don't want it to end up on the top. And that is because metallics themselves have a tendency to help create cells. So if you put it underneath and on top of a collar, it seems to work better that way. And then I'm just adding the pyro red here. 
and we're going to blow it out now one big thing these are 10 by 20 canvases and I normally use my smaller blow dryer demon dryer for canvases this size but I couldn't find the nozzle the attachment so I brought out Blowzilla and she was a little bit too strong for this but I ended up making it work right here I'm thinking to myself this is not going to be easy because I again didn't know the strength of the blow dryer although I've used it 20 million times every painting is different because those paints are never exactly the same thickness so I uh, tried it on low and it didn't go anywhere then I put it up on high and it was pretty powerful but I beat through it somehow you know the whole thing with the Dutch pour is the technique in the the technique is in the wrist you have to move your wrist the right way and aim that air the right way to get that fan like like the the beta tail structure um, if you blow straight down at it or just blow it straight across it, it's very hard you got to move your wrists a little bit the easiest way I can say is aim the the blow dryer at the paint as if you're gonna blow over the top of the paint and you want to start when the paint starts to move you want to take your hand and slightly twist your wrist to the right and then straighten your wrist back out so you're almost like making a backward s that that's the easiest way for me to explain it holding your wrist straight and just blowing straight out you're not going to get that nice contour or edging that you see in a lot of dutch pours So you notice I paused there. I was going to blow that little area, but realized there's just not enough paint. So this is another thing you can do. You, you don't have to depend on that one line that you put across all three canvases to get you through your entire painting. You can add little puddles of paint and blow them out and tweak it here and there. Um, you can scrape parts off if you don't like them. Now, I will admit on film that third panel all the way to the right does not look like anything but when you see the close-up you're going to see it's very very pretty I absolutely unequivocally love how this piece turned out and I know that a uh, canela just did a turquoise and a purple and I want to explore those colors myself they they uh are really beautiful color palettes and I do want to apologize for the camera bouncing every you know 10 minutes or whatever it is I had it on the table next to me on a, on a little table I should say next to me and it just it's very sensitive so I took that little puddle there and I just blew it out and uh, now I'm gonna bring out my most favorite thing to use in the whole wide world <laughs> my airbrush it is super addictive so you have to be careful because you can really overwork a painting but i like to use this just to put some fine tuning on to the painting add a little more wispiness to the edges and you know define it where it needs to be defined this airbrush is under $60. It's in my Amazon shop. It's extremely easy to use. You literally get it out of the box. You screw one end of the hose onto that box, the other end onto the airbrush, and you push the button and you go. You don't have to play with gauges or anything like that. It's a master airbrush, and I just absolutely love the thing. All of these supplies by the way are in my Amazon shop 
if you use my Amazon links, just so you know, to get to Amazon, whether you buy art supplies or not, my channel gets credit for that. And it's a great way to help your favorite artist for free. Which, by the way, all of you that have been doing that, I thank you immensely. It really, really helped last month, especially with the whole vet debacle and everything else going on. So I really appreciate it. So it's almost time here for close up. I want to thank you all for watching. Please, if you haven't already subscribed, um, join my Facebook group, United We Pour with Tammy and Lisa. Uh, I run that with Lisa Wyatt Art, who also has a YouTube channel you should check out. Uh, we have monthly contests. We give away prizes. There's a lot of beginners there that you can get help from. Uh, you can share your artwork. It's a, a great drama-free place to hang out if you want to make some new friends that do things that you like to do. I know so, t so many times in my life I have acquired hobbies that no one around me enjoys. And um, it's nice to have a group of friends that like the same things that you do, that you can talk to. I've made friends with many, many people. So it's been a great experience. So now it's time to torch the bubbles and give you the close up. It is one of my favorite Dutch pours that I have ever done. To be honest with you, I absolutely love it. And I may try this color combo again, maybe with some turquoise in it. I think red and turquoise would look beautiful. So here she is. I love the cells. You're going to see cells. Now I didn't use silicone. That's just from Floetrol and using different brands of paint, you know, different density of paints. All of that stuff matters when it, when it's time for uh, cell creation. And I'm going to give you a close up with the flash on so you can see that sterling silver shining. Here we go here. It's just really, really pretty. So my friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click like, please comment. I do read all of your comments. I truly appreciate all of them. Um, don't forget to subscribe. Gotta say it again. I'm trying to grow my channel, and I would appreciate it if you did that. I have some caterpillar cells here that are just really pretty, too. I'm hoping that I actually zoom over another one to point it out. They look connected like a caterpillar. No, I guess not. Anyway... I love you all. I hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, my friends, happy pouring.